Okay, so I have my quest cave, for now at least. Maybe not by the time this episode actually gets made. But anyway, it's time to move on to my next goal, getting my first 99 skill cape that I've decided will be a Slayer because it's awesome and it appeals to my inner 12 year old. I don't really know how long this is going to take. I did some back of the envelope maths and came up with 100 to 150k Slayer XP per hour for this account when I'm on task. I need about 5.5 million XP in 99, so that's like maybe 45 hours of Slayer. That's also not including anything else, like doing bossing or any kind of support skill like divination for charges, so it's probably going to be longer. I guess this is a rambly way of saying that I'm not 100% sure as I'm recording this, whether I'll get to 99 in this episode or maybe do it across two episodes, or even whether I'm going to focus 100% on Slayer because I might get a little bored and do some other side projects too. It's going to be an adventure. One thing I do know though is before I actually start the Slayer grind, I want a few upgrades. I want to at least try and do this right, even if I'm 100 miles away from a power gamer. Firstly, I want to get my charming in back, because the last thing I want to do is spend 50 hours picking up gold charms. Secondly, I want to get tier 3 luck. For people unfamiliar with how luck rings work in RuneScape, then firstly, I sympathize, because there's literally nothing in game that explains how they work and you have to check all of it on the wiki, and secondly, I've got you covered. The luck mechanic in RS3 boosts your chances of getting rare or unique drops from monsters, like Vandal's Hilt from General Grador or a whip from Abyssal Demons. They actually boost your drop chances in a whole bunch of other random non-combat stuff like mining and opening clues, but let's not go into that just now. From my point of view, they're going to give me better loot for my Slayer grind. Luck also comes in tiers, 1 through 4. You might think that higher tier luck is better than lower tier luck, but actually it really isn't. At least not when it comes to Slayer and bossing. All tiers of luck give you the same bonus, but higher tiers increase the number of monsters the bonus works at. I currently have tier 2 luck, which gives me bonus drops for monsters up to level 80 Slayer, and most bosses up to Gold Wars 1. My goal is to get tier 3 luck, which works all the way up to level 120 Slayer mobs, which is, I think all of them, as well as more bosses, specifically QBD, as well as all of the Gold Wars 2 generals. Normally you get this from wearing a Ring of Fortune, but I'm a paranoid hardcore player and I have a Ring of Life glued to my ring slot at all times, so instead, I'm going to use the Ring of Fortune Relic power. So I still need the Ring of Fortune, I'm just going to throw it at the Archaeology Monument instead of putting it on my finger. Now I know that taking this Relic power locks me out of higher end PBM relics so it's not truly efficient but I don't have those relics anyway and I'm tired of grinding out Archaeology levels. Really this is just a super long explanation for why I'm not going to hit this layer grind straight away. Anyway, here's level 89 strength. Well, I'm going to need a lot of tokens. Hands up if you love Dungeoneering. You can't see it, but my hand is, unironically, kind of half raised right now. I actually don't mind it. I like all the random skills you get to train. Like this thieving level. Boom. 91 thieving. And there we have it, a charming imp. This is actually the second one I've bought and I died and lost my first one. So this is going straight onto my tool belt. I think I would lose whatever's left of my sanity if I had to grind out another 100,000 tokens for a third one. Next up, the Ring of Fortune. All I actually need is an onyx and the most reliable way for me to get one of those is the fight kiln. So it's time for me to massacre a few more lava monsters and claim that gem. And here we go, time to actually make a Ring of Fortune. I don't think I've ever done this before. I've never bought them from the Grand Exchange. It feels kind of weird, but also like really cool to make your own jewelry like this. And now I have to make it into the Relic and Tier 3 luck, and I'm locked up all the way to 99 Slayer. So let's start.
Oh my fucking god. That's a Dragon Rider Lance. That's a Dragon Rider Lance. That is amazing. I, um, I, I took a break to do my Daily Reaper. And on the last kill, I just got it. That is insane. I've got that on a kill count of 45. Both the Dragon Rider Lance and the pet within 45 KC. That is Iron Man luck on steroids. So I've done a little thinking. And firstly, getting a Lance is huge. Uh, it doesn't actually change my overall plan of getting 99 Slayer, but it opens up a ton of doors after that, as well as making the grind itself a lot easier. The Dragon Rider Lance is a tier 85 two-handed melee weapon that you can see murdering old Guthan in this clip right now. It's actually more of a hybrid tier because it's got tier 90 accuracy but only tier 80 damage. That said, why am I so excited about getting it? After all, I'm only one level away from 90 attack, and at that point I could just make myself an Elder Rune two-handed sword from smithing. No RNG required, and that's also tier 85. Well, one, the Dragon Rider Lance is augmentable, which even with my budget Iron Man perks, still adds about 5% to his DPS. And two, it's a halberd type weapon. In general, weapon type in RuneScape doesn't mean jack. A sword is the same as a mace, is the same as a dagger. All you actually care about is the weapon's tier. For halberd type weapons though, this isn't true. Halberds have a range of two tiles, rather than the standard one tile you get with all other melee weapons. This is great at a ton of bosses where it allows you to make melee attacks without getting meleeed back. So it opens up melee as a potential option at QBD or Araxor, where I'd previously been worried about using melee. Also, and perhaps even more importantly, all of your AoE abilities get an extra point of range, so you can hit way more enemies with abilities like Whirlwind or Cleave. This is huge on Slayer tasks, and makes a massive bonus to how fast you can grind them out. I can't speak to Jagex's design philosophy, that they decided to make Halberds flat out better than any other melee weapon in the game, but they did. And the Dragon Rider Lance happens to be the best Halberd weapon I can get until a Noxious Scythe from Araxor, which could be literally hundreds of hours of gameplay away, if not more. I have had crazy luck on this account so far, and I hope it continues. Ooh, Garb of Subjugation. I think it's a duplicate, unfortunately. I've been trying to do a little bit of bossing when I can, whether it's Reaper Task, or if I can do a boss fire slayer like you can with Grill, just so I can roll on those dopamine job tables that bosses get. Ah, uh, that's a Zami Hill, another one on the collection log, on the same task too. And my third Garb of Subjugation. That's three uniques on one slayer task. Look at that drop log for Krill. Just a pet, shield, and Zami Spear off the whole collection log in 600 kills. That could be my first boss title. Krill is actually just such a great boss for an Iron Man. I've got almost 500 Lanta times and a thousand wines in the bank for basically just him. And that's not even including all the ones I've already turned into potions. No video would be complete without some Sun Spaders assembly, and that's level 60 to level 62 invention. Anyway, back to more Slayer. Hey, level 90. That was level 90 in all the melee stats. I can wear Elder Room. There's a lot of stuff. What the hell is Shadow Realm Shields? There's so much stuff, but I just have no idea what it is. What are all these armors? Runescape is such a bloated game. The Bandos War Shield. <laughs> Great job, I was laid back in 2018. Now it's just one thing off the collection log. A black dragon egg? I can't use it yet, but that's low key, probably the best drop in QBD. I have a breeding pair of dragons now. 
Um, did I just get 91 defense from someone else killing a minion? I was just peeking at this guy's gear and, well, that's a level, I guess. And that's the end of the episode. Level 83 cooking. Climactic. It wasn't how I wanted to end the episode. I was really hoping to get all the way to level 99 Slayer in the Cape, but well, my account's been offline for weeks already due to whatever it is that's going on at Jagex HQ, and it could be offline for weeks more before it's restored. So I decided to cut the episode here, and this was the last clip I got before the Spaghetti Code Apocalypse. I've just hit level 97 Slayer, so next episode might be quite short when it does come out, but uh, it is what it is. I hope that everyone's having a great time, and if you have been affected by the server lockout issues like me, then I hope your account's back safely soon. Peace. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the episode.